So again, this humanitarian situation only getting worse. All right, thanks so much. Shim Tiaz, Thai there, live for us from Gaza. All right, Mark Regev is the spokesman for the Israeli Prime Minister and joins us now live from Jerusalem. Good to have you with us. If I could read a statement to you here from Amnesty International. Good to be back. Issued Could after the you, attack Sammy? on the uh, UN uh, school in Gaza, July the 30th, uh, the statement says, if the strike on this school was the result of Israeli artillery fire, it would constitute an indiscriminate attack and a likely war crime. Did you, in fact, use an artillery shell to hit this school? I'll answer that in a second. I just want to say that I owe you an answer for, um, for my previous no, interview. No, I don't want an answer when in a second, Mr. Regev. Please, could, could, you, could you focus? No, but your viewers, your viewers, you, you, you often things, raise your viewers, distraction cards. I will, could you I will please answer. Just answer give me 20 the seconds. Question. 20 seconds. No, no, no. I will, but please, last time there was no, a question list on open. Give last me 20 time, seconds. Last time, Mr. Regev, you seconds. accused me of Israel treating you unfairly. You hospital. said I should have interviewed you in the same manner as Hanan Ashrawi, yes. who is not accused, who has not been accused of shelling Correct. Correct. A, 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 any school by any international human rights organization. You're representative Sammy, but you of a left government an which has out been... There. Which you, has I been promised, accused of shelling a school promised, by several Sammy, international promised, human rights organizations. Sammy, Sammy, I Hamas promise Hamas to get is back not a member to you. Of Hamas. She's and a I have to keep my promise. I have to keep my promises. The fact that you seem to think, Sammy, Mr. Regev, that Sammy, the treatment of Palestinians to get back at you. like Hanan Ashrawi should be question. determined by their ethnicity Sammy, rather than monologuing. by their actions, it, it says more about your worldview than mine. So coming back to the question. Did you use an artillery no, shell to no, hit Sammy, this Sammy, school? but I promised you an answer. Sammy, I promised you an answer, and I don't want to break my promises. Please. Sammy, at the El Aqsa Hospital, there was no Israeli fire on that hospital. What happened was, and your viewers need to know, the fire was on an immediately adjacent building that was a Hamas weapons depot. There was no fire on the hospital, I can say that unequivocally. The question that needs to be asked is why is Hamas putting its weapons depot next to a hospital? Now I'm happy Mr. to answer Regev, any question you have, but I had to keep my the promise. Question. I promised to get you an answer, and I did. Did you use an artillery shell to hit okay, a at UN, the UN school, school yesterday in Gaza? Please stop raising distraction cards. The answer is, unfortunately, at this stage, still unclear. What is clear is that there was a firefight in the immediate vicinity of the school, and Hamas uh, terrorists were shooting at our forces on the ground. Our assault forces returned fire, as is naturally fired upon. What is clear is that Hamas had brutalized a UN institution, turning the vicinity of a UN school into a war zone. And as you know, Sammy, the UN has already reported three particular cases where uh, weapons, Hamas weapons, have been found in UN institutions, then there's a consistent pattern of behavior by Hamas to brutalize, to violate UN neutrality, to violate UN humanitarian actions by turning uh, UN facilities into a war zone. You know the Secretary General himself has Mr. ordered Mr. an Regev, investigation not a because he himself Hamas. is not happy had, with the way... For, for two days the, running, I've had interviews with Ghazi Hamad from Hamas in which I have pressed him on this issue. Let us please not waste time in this interview asking an Good. Israeli spokesperson what Hamas has done. Now, coming back to the question, may I quote to you what Ban Ki-moon has said after this attack? Quote, all available evidence, all available evidence Correct. points to Israeli artillery as the cause. Is he wrong? Uh, I think at this stage it's still not clear. We are not aware that it was Israeli artillery that caused that. What we do know is there was a firefight with both sides exchanging hostile fire. There was combat in the vicinity. Now, I don't know if it was Palestinian ordinance or Israeli ordinance. I do know the fact, and this is not disputed, that Hamas deliberately turned that UN facility into a war zone. And according to the Secretary General himself, in, a, in an open letter that he put out, he said that if terrorists are turning UN facilities into war zones, they are accountable for the tragic loss of life because we don't target UN facilities. We don't target UNRWA schools. That, unfortunately, has been done by Hamas, who's deliberately turned them into combat areas. Uh, Mr. Why Reg else are they storing missiles in their facilities? Chris Gunnis has addressed this issue, and he said, quote, we have done an initial site visit, and this is what we can say. There was no evidence of militants firing rockets out of the school whatsoever. Are you calling him a liar? Are you saying you have definitive information 
that there was rocket fire or military activity going on inside that school? Unequivocally, yes, there were Hamas terrorists shooting at our forces in the immediate vicinity. And I no, don't no, even say question strongly is not about the vicinity. Me, I've got the Israeli Chris army Gunness, statement. I I'm respect. asking you, was, are you no. saying there was firing going on from inside this school? Sorry, if you are outside the school, opposite the front gate and shooting, are you still not using the school as a human shield, Sammy? Let's be fair. Now, Why don't I respect we let Chris Guinness. He has that question. many friends in Israel. We totally support. Nabi Pillai has answered that question. question. Please allow me. And she said... He has many in, friends. It, only a, a, a few minutes ago, she has said it is completely unconscionable that the proportionality and precaution that international law requires is being ignored. In answer to a question about whether it will be justified for uh, Israel to shell the school, if there is rocket fire or activity in what you call the vicinity. Is she wrong? <clears throat> Once again, there is no uh, evidence at this stage that Israel did, in fact, uh, uh, target the school. I know for a fact that we did not target. Could there have been a, a stray shell in the, in, the, in the framework of a firefight? If that's the case, once again, you have to put the blame on the people who turned the area into a combat zone. But please allow me to answer a question, because you mentioned my friend Chris Guinness and UNRWA, and we support their humanitarian work very, very much so. Uh, it's important for us. Well, but Chris Guinness has the like same problem friend, that your Al Jazeera reporters have. If you walk around, no, please. Terms, this serious violation of international law by Israeli forces. Now, once again, um, how do you, how you're do not you allowing to me to answer your question? He, you said, to he said there was no evidence. Sorry, you're, 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 you are confusing the issue and not allowing me to answer a specific question. You asked a specific question. Please, Sammy, allow me to answer. You said that Chris Guinness said there was no evidence of Israeli fire, correct? I'm oh, sorry, of Hamas fire in the area. And no, I'd like to school, say and make a point that the, UNRWA does not, not have that. guns. That is They're a humanitarian. Incorrect. They're a that humanitarian organization. I did not say that. I'll no, read no, you I'm again a, so it's clear what, uh, you said what there was Mr. No Chris evidence. Gunness said to Please. Al Jazeera yesterday on the 10 a.m. GMT show. He said, we've done an initial site visit, and this is what we can say so far. There was no evidence of militants firing rockets out of the school whatsoever. Those are his words. Do you have evidence that there was fire from inside and the here, school? And I'd, like to, is wrong? I'd like to answer that. Sammy, I'll answer the question specifically. One of the problems in covering this in Gaza, it doesn't matter if you're a reporter or if you're a humanitarian organization like uh, Mr. Gunnis represents, that if you go out there and you say, did you see Hamas fire? When you live in a, a Gaza Strip where there is authoritarian rule, where Hamas rules with an iron fist, anyone who speaks out against Hamas can face immediate violent retribution. There have been countless documented Mr. cases Regev, of Hamas are you Hamas telling me that Chris Gunness doesn't know how to conduct his own areas. research? And he's being misled. He's not a child, is he? And he says, I'm we have done, that, no, no, we have I, done a preliminary you, investigation, his, he I, says. I, 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 I'm very we have taken analysis. We've analyzed fragments. Yes. These are his words. We've examined craters and other damage. Are you saying he does not know how to conduct an investigation? But, but Chris Guinness, to be fair, to be fair, Chris Guinness did not know that, that Hamas was storing rockets in three UN facilities until it was too late. There is obviously a problem. The UN Secretary General has admitted there's a problem because he's ordered an investigation of the abuse of UNRWA facilities. So I think it's very important, once again, how do you get people to stand up and say that Hamas was using this spot to shoot at when those Mr. people Regev, afterwards have to ha, live with Hamas? It's an way. authoritarian regime. You know that, have Sammy. You, used, you know it's an authoritarian regime. Do you, you deny used, that Gaza is an authoritarian this regime? Is, this is not Do you deny that, you Sammy? Me. Sir, is Gaza an authoritarian regime? Can people say. The Israeli government. No, but can, can people say what they think in Gaza? Have you used can artillery people? shells in, in Gaza? Have you used artillery shells in densely populated parts of, of Gaza? Of course we have. Okay. We Amnesty have. International quote says artillery uh, should never be used can. against targets in crowded civilian areas, and its use in such a manner would never be considered a surgical strike. They go on to talk about the possibility of a likely war crime. Are they wrong? Is Amnesty wrong as well as the fact that you, or, or what you contend, that Chris Gunnis doesn't know how to conduct an investigation? Is this statement by Amnesty wrong as well? As well.
Uh, please, uh, you know, I'm sorry, Chris is a friend. Sorry, Chris is a friend and I won't allow you to put words in my mouth that I did not say about him. And I, I, I don't think you should try to break up our very good relationship and our relationship with Una that we respect. So please, don't put my words in my mouth. I never use those words about Chris Gunness, and I ask you to take that back. But you insinu but let's be you clear insinuated here. that. Answer uh, the question, uh, please, uh, about Amnesty. Are conflicts? they wrong? Are they wrong if no, they say No, I did not make any personal shells, insinuation. Artillery shells are not to be used in civilian areas. Uh, yes, are they I'm wrong happy to answer as the a question. war crime? You know, uh, you see, uh, the war crime is committed when a terrorist group like Hamas uses civilian facilities for its war machine. And I'm as the UN Secretary General Hamas. himself I'm asking said, you, do you believe, believe Amnesty no is authority. wrong in saying you shouldn't use artillery in No, but I'm answering your question. You you're just not... don't... Please you're, answer. You're... It's very simple. No, I'm answering, I'm answering your question by quoting the UN Secretary General who said, uh, Ban Ki-moon said uh, last week, that when terrorists turn UN facilities into a war zone, when they put their missiles and their war machine inside UN facilities, <laughs> They are responsible because that is the war crime. The essence of international humanitarian law is a separation between combatants and non-combatants. You know that, Sammy. I know that. And so does Amnesty International. When Hamas violates that principle, when Hamas puts its war machine inside UN schools, in mosques, in urban neighborhoods, it is responsible for the most primary and severe violation of international humanitarian law. Amnesty International knows that. I know that. The point is, if in ensuing combat, people, innocent people, are caught inadvertently in the combat, and unfortunately there are casualties, the question has to be asked, who turned the civilian Mr. neighborhood Regev, into they're a not war talking zone? about who people being caught in any inadvert inadvertently caught in any crossfire. Navi Pillay only this morning says there appears to be a deliberate defiance of obligations that international law imposes on Israel. Deliberate, not people being caught in crossfire. No, no. Is she wrong? I, I don't think she said what you're insinuating. I'm not insinuating. This is a direct Israel quote. Does not I'll read to you again. There appears to be deliberate defiance of obligations that international law imposes on Israel. Is she wrong? Or are you deliberately defying international law? Those are her words, not she, my insinuation. First of all, on the contrary, on the contrary. In so fact, she's if right. you look at the way the Israeli army behaves in this very difficult combat situation, I didn't say that. Why? You were always putting words in my mouth, Sammy. Do you have a problem? No, I'm, I'm asking you for a yes or no say, answer. You, it's not fair, Sammy. I'm asking you for a yes or no answer. Is Sammy, she wrong Israel in saying there is a deliberate break. pattern of you, these are her words, uh, a, a defying your obligations of international law? She hasn't law. said that. She says appears to be, correct? No, no. She said appears okay. to be. Okay. Do you Maybe think there appears was, to be a, a deliberate than, pattern uh, of you sort of defying it, it, international law? Well, if you watch Al Jazeera, you could get that impression, but it's not true. All right, we'll leave it there. Mark Regev, spokesman for the Israeli Prime Minister. Thank you. Thank you for having me, Sammy. Always a pleasure. Now, Sai Borechat, the chief Palestinian negotiator, joins us now here. Good to have you with us. First of all, I understand you're in Doha to try and work on some kind of ceasefire arrangement. Do you, have you reached an agreement for a joint delegation that would go from the Palestinians to Cairo? Yes. And when will that happen? As soon as Israel accepts a ceasefire. Israel, on their part, I'm sure they would say they've accepted. Mark Regev has told me they've even introduced unilateral ceasefires many times. It's the Palestinian side which keeps breaking it. Well, I... Uh challenge the Israelis to now there is an offer to have a humanitarian ceasefire I challenge the Israelis to come out an and offer say from who, who from the Americans are working on it President Abbas is working on it Egyptians are working on it Qataris Turks Europeans UN Ban Ki-moon Nabil Arabi of the, the whole world but, but, the, but the Israelis will say they unilaterally ha uh, announced a ceasefire and yet Hamas did not respect it. The Palestinians did not respect it. They took a cabinet meeting. It was backed by the Egyptians. It was backed by the Arab League. And it was the Palestinians who refused to abide by that. They're not saying the truth. The truth is... Well, is, it, it did happen that they, they yes, announced tacti you tactically, a ceasefire. Tactically, that is true. tactically, they will say that we want a ceasefire, we accept a ceasefire, but at the same time, they this morning recalled another 16,000 reservists, rising the num raising the number of Israeli reservists to 87,000. You, you should keep in mind that Gaza has no tanks, no F-15s, no naval bases. 
You have to keep in mind that up till this moment, 24 days of the so-called fighting, as if there is war between two equal sides. Not a single Israeli child was killed, not a single Israeli woman was killed, not a single Israeli house was destroyed. But, now, but, but not because there wasn't an attempt to do that. I'm sure the Israelis would point out that mm -hmm. the Palestinians are firing indiscriminate rocket attacks. That has been condemned by Navi Pillai in her mm -hmm. statements, uh, mentioning distinction, proportionality. Yeah. Okay, let me, let me take is the that, story. Is that not, is no, that no, not let, correct? Let me take the story. I'm not... I'm not no, no, is that not look, right? I, I'm here to have, as you said, I'm here to have a ceasefire. I am here because I know that this uh, attacks by Israel will not get any political solutions. Let's get to add to the complexities. Now, yesterday, Israel asked people to evacuate their homes. Yesterday, the day before yesterday, the day before yesterday. The UN coordinated with the Israelis to move these people to, to seven schools. And they gave the Israelis the coordinates of the schools. Okay, and now the UN is saying that seven schools were hit, not only the school yesterday. So what we have, we have deliberate attempts by the Israeli army, air force and navy to target civilians and to murder civilians and to kill civilians. As a matter of fact, as I'm speaking to you now, the number of killed is 1,405 persons, more than 7,500 wounded. Gaza today, once, once the dust settles down, when this, but we have this fire. But you're not answering my question. The question yeah. is, aren't the Palestinians also fire, employing tactics that have been criticized by international human rights groups as endangering civilian we respect, life we too? Respect, we respect international law. This why. We're here saying on behalf of all Palestinians. You so ask that's me wrong. Any tactics no, that endanger uh, no, look, look, any, 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 any targeting of civilians anywhere is wrong. All right. Uh, we're not condoning anything. We, but the fact is, on the matter, it's Palestinian civilians who are being slaughtered. That is true. It's the Palestinian children are being slaughtered. What do you mean, majority? All of it. I'm telling you, not a single Israeli civilian was killed, or child, or woman, and we don't want this to happen. But who's targeting? Uh, actually, two, two Israeli civilians right. have been killed okay. By, okay. by rocket fire and a Thai civilian worker. Okay. Th th that is not. Look, uh, I'm accurate. not condoning the killing of civilians from anyone. But all I'm telling you that the figures in my hands mm -hmm. shows me that 53 families, children, women, f parents, grandparents, were annihilated. Totally. 53 families. I'm talking about Palestinian families, numbering 40 to 50 to 70 to 100. Okay? Why, why is Israel doing this? Is it Israel firing the missiles, not knowing that Gaza is the most densely populated area on Earth? No, they know that. Are they doing this just because they want to kill? What is the purpose of this war? Who initiated this war? Did Hamas begin the firing of this war? Well, Wasn't it Israel that began in Hebron and then burned life? Rather than going back there? to the beginning, let, let's no, perhaps refocus on, on where this uh, truce effort is now going. When will you go to Cairo? Do you have a date? The minute Israel accepts a ceasefire, all right, we'll be in Cairo. Have the Palestinian factions agreed to be on board with that? Absolutely. We are working together. Hamas, Islamic look, Jihad. Look, we are now beyond Hamas, Islamic Jihad, Fatah, and so on. What's being targeted is the Palestinian cause. What's being targeted by Netanyahu is the Palestinian state. What's being targeted is 11 million Palestinians. What Netanyahu is waging war is Palestinian national unity, is the national consensus government. And that's the truth. That's the truth. Would, so, would, would the Palestinian factions be willing to hand over security at the Rafah uh, border to the Palestinian unity government? <laughs> well, to be honest with you, Hamas is no longer having a government in Gaza. You recall last, last May when we have had a Palestinian national consensus government? Hamas has no longer a government in Gaza. There is a Palestinian government right. composed of technocrats agreed upon by Hamas and all Palestinian factions. So we don't have a Hamas government in Gaza. Yes, Hamas agreed that we'll be in the borders, that we'll be rebuilt, and it's all, all right. our responsibilities. I have another point here before we let you go. I'd like you to answer. How does, how does the Palestinian Authority plan to pursue action at the International Criminal Court? We're about to sign. Uh, we have an application in the court since 2009, and we are uh, considering now, since we have the signatures of all factions, uh, all leaders, to sign the uh, Rome Statute. And uh, I think what Israel is doing in Gaza, what Israel is doing against Palestinians, has one title, war crimes. And we will pursue this. This do, do you have the necessary political and diplomatic support to become to, uh, a member for the yes, ICC? Yes, we do. We do since we became Palestine, should recall, November 29, 2012, have became uh, an observer uh, state at the UN, General Assembly vote. And we are entitled now to pursue this, and we will. Thank you very much, Saeed Barakat, for coming in here.
Well, our diplomatic editor, James Bass, is in West Jerusalem. James, first of all,